All right, everybody, it's middle grade author R. Chris Wells coming at you with part two of our series, looking at old school essentials, advanced fantasy. We're gonna be asking the question, is old school play right for our family? And today we're gonna to be looking at the referee's tone. So buckle up, get ready. We're gonna go old school on this episode of Dungeons with Dad. All right, well, last time we looked at the old school essentials, advanced fantasy player's tome. Today, we're gonna to look at the referee's tome. So this is going to be your game master guide, if you will, combined with your monster manual. And like last time, before I dive into this book, I do wanna let you know that I did receive this copy of Old School Essentials Advanced Fantasy for the purpose of this review, but I do want you to know that I'm gonna give you my 100% honest feedback and I've received no compensation other than just this book from Necrotic Gnome and Exalted Funeral. And I can't wait to open it up with you and explore what they've done here. Again, I mentioned with the player's tone, the um, excellent craftsmanship of the work here by Exalted Funeral and uh, Necrotic Gnome. It's truly a work of art. These are books that you want to flip through. You want to dive into them and you can throw them in your backpack and carry them with you to your games. Now, again, just like the player's tone, I love that you've got quick and handy charts here, everything from adventuring to encumbrance to wilderness rules, encounters, that combat sequence that we talked about last time, attack matrix for Thaco. Great having that all at your fingertips. All right. Now, again, this book is very well laid out and is very logical. You have an introduction, the nitty gritty on running adventures, the different monsters, encounter tables, because we talked about how important random encounters are, NPC encounters, treasure magic items, sentient swords. Oh man, that's so cool. And then a bunch of indexes that are going to help you out. Now, again, you've got to have the player's tome to run this game because without it, you don't have the character creation options that you need. Okay, running adventures. Great game master section here. It's going to tell you stuff you've probably heard before in previous RPGs, but it's always good refresher. And it's going to tell you about how to run the game and how to use monsters and NPCs and think like a monster and that sort of thing. Here we have several adventure scenarios from banishing ancient evil to clearing ruins, contacting a lost civilization. This is really handy for homebrewing your own adventures, which I highly recommend with kids because you can weave their interests into the plot of the story. Now, again, we won't go through the entire book, but there's a helpful section on designing a dungeon. Great tables there, designing a wilderness, designing a base town. See, homebrew was so important in these early days and should, should be still. Now, this is a section that my kids love. I mean, they love flipping through these uh, black and white illustrations and just imagining these monsters and you as a referee get to bring them to life. I love this. Combat tables, here we go. So now we're into the monster descriptions and you can see it's just page after page of gorgeous artwork, very evocative, all about these different monsters. Now you'll notice not every single monster gets its own piece of artwork, but the artwork that does appear is really good. I mean, look at that. That is so awesome. They've really outdone themselves when it comes to the artwork. Now, again, I won't go through all of this, but you see there are just page after page after page of monsters. Oh, man, look at that. My kids had stared at that for hours. They love this. Now, again, this is more dangerous, right, than you might see from typical Hasbro D&D. &D. However, that's an okay thing. I argued in my last review that, you know, having a little danger in your D&D &D games can be a good thing. Having situations where players have to run away, that can be a good thing. It teaches kids that not everything can be solved through combat. They've got to use their wits. And then we've got encounter tables. As I said, you've got some great random generators here. You can roll and get random animals, random monsters to fight your PCs. Love that. Random NPC encounters. This is important. Now, you know one thing that's kind of neat about 
old school D and D and old school essentials is the building of strongholds. How, how cool would that be to, to be a ruler of your own castle? Kids think about that all the time. You can allow them to do that. And then look at all this treasure. Lots of cool magic items in this section you would expect to see in a game master's guide. Very helpful, very fun. And peppered throughout are these beautiful illustrations. I love this. Potions, rings, magical rings, rod staves, wands. So now you're getting into equipment. Okay, now this section is super cool. Sentient swords, swords that have a personality, swords that have an alignment. I love these rules. I feel like I've gone back in time, and I think that's really neat. And then extraordinary powers. That's pretty cool. All right, then you got a table of indexes. All right, so what do I think about old school essentials, advanced fantasy referees tone? Well, much of what I said about the player's tone applies here. I love this style of play. It's not for everybody. I get that. But this idea of teaching our kids courage, teaching our kids that there's real danger in the world, teaching our kids how to handle situations and not just, you know, blast our way through every single challenge, that is a good thing. And I think that that's something that the old school style of play really emphasizes. Now, again, I do think that as a referee, you have the power to be able to dial back some of these things that are more dark or dial it up. You know your kids. So if I've got a six-year-old, the kinds of scenery and the kinds of situations that I'm going to put my children in are going to be different than if I have an 11 or a 12 year old and you as a referee you as a game master are going to have to make those kinds of decisions but I do think that if you've got kids six seven eight nine ten eleven they can handle the rule set of old school essentials especially if you know it well and if you dedicate yourself to studying this referee's tone and spending some time with it consulting these charts when you need them you're going to have no problem running old school essentials, especially if you're familiar with other role-playing games. So I heartily commend it to you. I think it would be great if more parents introduced their kids to this old school style of play. And I don't think you'll regret it if you pick up this referee's tome. As I mentioned in the last video, each of these are available for $40 on Exalted Funerals website and Necrotic Gnome. You can pick them up in a slipcase format, which, you know, the advantage to that where they have multiple books is that you can break out these sections and pass them across the table. And a lot of people like that. For me, I like having everything in one volume. And so I prefer the player's tome and the referee's tome. But I commend the website to you to have a look at and, and see what you think. But listen, you can't go wrong with old school essentials. There was a lot right with the original Dungeons and Dragons basic and expert rules. And so if it ain't broke, why fix it? So I heartily commend that to you. All right, well, that's all that we have for you today on Dungeons with Dad. If you like that episode, please like and subscribe and hit that little bell to follow us for more. And listen, if you're looking for middle grade fantasy fiction you can trust, follow us down at the link below for Staff and Shield Publishing. We'll see you next time on Dungeons with Dad.